Hello to you, well it's Scott Pickens here in Pando Wealth and Grades and I want to bring you day two of Viewship Mastery. You can see here that I'm wearing another cool t-shirt. Right, sure, we went through so much uh, today, or oh, actually yesterday. So let's go through it now, day two. The first thing is it was all about questions. And questions help you with what you want. Questions will help shift the focus and it's all about the triad. Remember what I spoke about yesterday with the triad where you've got the physiology, the focus and the language. Questions are your most powerful tool and they help you become more and more resourceful. I hope this waterfall is not too uh, noisy next to me. I had to come around the corner because it's quite windy today. Questions help others come up with a solution and ultimately to own it. You know, if you tell someone to do something, then they, you know, it's your idea. But if you ask them questions and they come up with a solution, then it becomes their idea. And ultimately the way to create lasting change is by asking questions. And so, you know, it's something that reminds me of Nelson Mandela. There was an amazing talk that I saw by Simon Sinek on, on Nelson Mandela and he said two things. The first is that Nelson Mandela is always the last to speak, um, that he always listened to what everyone else had to say. Um, and the other thing was that he asked questions. You know, great leaders actually are better at asking questions than they are at giving solutions. They help other people come up with the solutions themselves. What about overwhelm? You know, most people, when they feel overwhelmed, they feel that it's permanent, pervasive, and personal. And ultimately, a leader and leadership is all about intention, getting the knowledge, and, the, and giving someone the emotional experience. So what is the intention of a leader? What is the outcome you're trying to achieve? How can you share the knowledge with people and then giving them an emotional experience so that it's actually anchored in? And ultimately, you know, when people are in pain, that is when you need to interrupt their pattern um, in terms of what is actually happening. Let me turn the page over here for you. Right, I've got quite a lot to share today. So it was really interesting that we're talking about patterns and, and how you know, in terms of creating lasting change, very few people are, are good at it. You know, 95% of people that give up smoking uh, don't actually achieve it. 92% of people that give up weight loss don't actually achieve it. And 88% of people that do their New Year's resolutions never actually fulfill them. And that's because they don't get leverage. And so it's all about leverage. And you know, just like leverage, if you think about it back to your physics days, you know, it's like if you've got a you've got a big piece of metal and you, you use you know a long lever or a long pole, it's much easier to, to use a lot more force and um, and power to be able to get it to happen. So the first thing to do, and, and again I'll go through this in a lot more detail for the people that are part of the wealth inner circle, but is to connect and listen, find a way to build rapport with someone. And then you need to ask and associate, and this is probably the one that I'll struggle with a lot because you need to put people in pain. It's gonna take courage. And you know, you need to ask the pain and the pleasure questions. And ultimately you have to be willing to go there. You have to have the courage to show them where the problems are, to create the leverage so that you create that lasting change. And you know, it's so interesting, we all get stuck in our stories. You know, we all got stories of why we are somewhere. I spoke about it yesterday. And so the question is, how are you gonna find leverage to get someone out of their, their story? And then ultimately you need to check in with them and observe and, and ultimately help them turn, and turn it into lasting change. And that's, that's how you turn someone's shoulds into musts. You know, they talk a lot about money and you know, I should earn more money, I should earn more money. But yet when you have to earn more money, when it's a must, you always find a way. And it's the same with weight loss or anything else. So the question is, how do you turn your shoulds into musts? Influence is the number one skill of successful people. So, you know, the question is, if you want to be successful, what are you doing to learn about influence? And ultimately, it all starts with your state. Now, I'll share this diagram when I do the webinar, but ultimately, it's, it's our identity that, it's our blueprint of who we are. It then becomes our thoughts, then it becomes our feelings, then it becomes our doing, our actions, and ultimately our results. And what's interesting is that, you know, they talk about this being the success formula or, or the uh, success cycle, because the bigger your identity, the bigger your, your thoughts are going to be, the bigger your actions are going to be, the bigger results you're going to take, the bigger your identity will grow and your, your, your success will go up and up and up. Whereas if you've got a small identity and you don't think you're going to succeed, then you're going to think bad thoughts and you're going to take you know, small, you know, small actions and you're going to get bad results and then that's going to further impact your identity and ultimately you're going to go you know, further downhill in terms of the success, um, you know, what do you call it, the, the opposite of the success formula, the, the, <laughs> the falling apart formula. Henry Ford said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. 
And what are you thinking about in life? What do you think you can or what do you think you can't? We then had an amazing session by Sid Jacobson on NLP, which stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming, and it's the study of the structure of subjective experience. Now again, I don't have uh, time or the ability to do it on this, on this uh, video, but I'll do it on the webinar. But ultimately, what I found fascinating is that they, they talk a lot about learning. And when someone's in a specific state of mind, you can learn something. And to remember it later, you've got to go back to that state of mind. And they've actually done research on it and that if you're in the right state, you can learn 12 times more than if you're in the wrong state. Imagine how you can 12x your learning if you get yourself into the right state. And a classic example of this was an experiment they did with children. And if children eat peppermints while they are studying and writing their exams, they can do um, over 15% better on all their test results. Then he spoke about the human uh, drives and how most of us get stuck in our stories and how we love to stay within famili familiarity. You know, we, we, we try and do everything we can, whether it's good or bad for us, to stay in a familiar position. And we, we don't like change or moving away from what is called cognitive dissonance. You know, whenever we make a change, we need to leave our comfort zone. No one likes leaving their comfort zone. And so to increase the change, you need to increase the cognitive dissonance. And successful people learn how to become comfortable with, with being uncomfortable. And it's really interesting when you think about that, because you know, what would you like to change in your life and what are you putting in place to make sure that, that it becomes a reality? And how are you gonna get comfortable with feeling uncomfortable? For change to last, it needs to be self-reinforcing. So you need to set up you know, patterns of success. People focus on what is changing rather than what is staying the same. Again, I find this in business all the time. People are always just focusing on what's wrong, but they're not focusing on, on what is right and, and what is staying the same. And they spoke a lot about the natural stages of learning. Now, I've learned this before. You know, most people are in unconscious incompetence. Then you go to conscious incompetence. Then you go to conscious competence. And finally, unconscious comp un incompetence. Unconscious competence. And what's really interesting is that you can't learn a lot of new things at once. So if you know how to drive a car, then that's easy. You can, you can drive a car while listening to something new. But if you're learning to drive a car, you can't learn you know, a new skill at the same time. And, and it's the greatest barrier to learning is that you've got to understand this, this success cycle of learning. And again, I will show it visually when I do the webinar because I think it'll be a lot more valuable to people in terms of the process. We spoke a lot about pattern interrupts. And again, I'm not going to go into that uh, for this video. Let me turn the page here. <laughs> Got to find a more professional way of doing this where I'm holding the video and trying to turn the book. We spoke about rapport and how to build rapport. And I love this part right here where, you know, infuse others with empathy and intention for them to like you. It's like a magnet where magnets attract each other. When you have empathy, it's much easier to work with someone. And when you have magnetism, they want to work with you. You know, how are you creating the magnetism? How are you attracting the people that you want in your life? And then we spoke about framing as well. You've got pre-framing, reframing, and deframing. Fascinating, you know, how, how that can set you up for success. And then finally, we finished off last night with an amazing lady um, who does body language. And she actually is involved in all the major court cases here in America. 55% of your language is non-verbal. 38% is in the tone of your voice and only 7% is in the words that you actually talk. And she shared some amazing um, facts on how you can spot people's body language and what it means between telling the truth and lying and handshakes and how you should or shouldn't be standing. Something else that's really interesting, the average man speaks 11,000 words a day and the average woman speaks 25,000 words a day, which I find quite fascinating. And apparently when, when, young, when boys are young, you know, like 50% of their language, 50, 60% of their language, and I know this, my son seven, is like vroom, 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 you know, the, the car or whatever, whereas girls actually just speak words. And she was just laughing. She says, you know, men never change. Um, they still, you know, they still speak, you know, sometimes with, without words, basically. And then finally, we finished off with this exercise, which I'll do in the webinar, which is absolutely fascinating, where you get to draw a picture. And anyone in the world can draw this picture. And when you draw the picture, there's, there's a number of key elements in it. And ultimately, it will, it will really show you who you are. What, what is your upbringing? Who you, know, what, who you are from a psychology perspective. And it just shows you how, no matter what you're thinking, your body is representing that to the rest of the world. And if you can read that language, like you know, English or, or Spanish or Mandarin, 
if you can read the language of body language, you can open up an entire different universe of understanding to the people around you so that you can not only understand them, but you can influence them. And so that's me, day two. Huge amount of learning. We started at uh, 8.15 in the morning and finished, uh, I got to bed after midnight, and then we started again at 8.15 this morning. So it's in incredibly intense. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed these uh, lessons. If you did, subscribe to the channel, share them with your friends. My most important mission in life is to empower people with the knowledge so that they can go out and live the greatness. You know, I like to inspire people to, to achieve the impossible. And um, for those of the part of the Wealth in a Circle, I look forward to doing the webinar and going into a lot more detail with these different exercises and workbooks that we're going through. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. Scott Piggin, signing out from San Diego. Cheers.